Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and this is 10 things that you probably got wrong about your personality type and about personality psychology in general. First of all, the idea that personality types are fixed. In some ways I feel like I'm making amends. I feel like uh, when I started out talking about psychology, I had no clue what I was talking about. I was obsessed with the idea of fixed personality types. I was obsessed with the idea of uh, finding this one way of life to organize my own life and experience. I was obsessed with the, the idea that there was one specific somebody that you were supposed to date and so on and so forth. Like I had so many misconceptions about psychology and what it means to be a human being, what it means to be happy and what it means to live a fulfilling life. And thankfully, I've continually stayed open and modest and humble. I've continuously kept an open mind and <laughs> pushed myself to keep learning, reflecting on my own experiences and decisions and critically assessing my own actions and how they feel and what they mean. I believe that people are capable of change. It's not easy. It takes a lot of work. But in the end, that's point number two, that you are supposed to fixate on one personality type or one aspect of your being. A lot of people become obsessed with their dominant function or their strongest personality types, trying to understand their strongest personality traits and what is most noticeable about them. But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is the shadow, the unconscious, and all those things that you have not yet explored and evolved in yourself. Carl Jung created his work in individuation because he believed that people were not the ego or the dominant function. He believed that people had a self which encompassed all different personality traits and all different cognitive functions. And he worked to help people achieve more balance and cross-connectivity between all cognitive functions. I was wrong about many things. I was wrong about my personality type, for one. I was so obsessed with the idea of being an INFJ and of course there was a part of me that was an INFJ just like there is a part of you that is every single personality type and certainly there are sides and times when I could dive into and explore these traits and certainly I had a lot of empathy for this type and I could feel and think the way an INFJ could but over time it became clear to me that I'd outgrown that label it didn't fit me anymore and in so many ways I found and learned to explore other personality traits outside the normal ones for an INFJ personality type. And so I felt I could never be an ambassador for INFJs anymore. I hope in the future that I can be an ambassador for one of the 8 billion ways that you could be a human being. And that's point number three that I'd like to move on to. The idea that personality traits are two point scales. A lot of people work with the idea of introversion and extroversion as two single point scales. You're either an introvert or an extrovert, nothing in between. Well, the truth is there are people that are very, very introverted and people that are moderately introverted, people that are slightly introverted, people that are slightly extroverted and so on and so forth. Personality is a spectrum and so every single person you meet will have a unique position on that scale at any given time. And that's point number four. The idea that your personality doesn't change from a day-to-day -day basis. The truth is, well, because of your mood and how you felt when you woke up and what you had for breakfast and all the things that you were doing during that day, uh, the stress, the motivations that you had, the goals that you set, and your ability to follow through on those goals, all of those things played a role in your personality and you move constantly between your personality and that's why it's very hard to get the same result on a personality test every single time that you take it because your perception of yourself and the traits are constantly evolving. It's hard to accept these things because of point five, the search for a fixed truth. Everyone's hoping to find a fixed truth and the prospect of the MBTI is this prospect of finding a map. A map where every decision, every action, every possibility is laid out for you so you never have to doubt ever again. A lot of people hope that personality type and uh, finding their personality type will freedom of doubt, freedom of uncertainty, freedom of chaos so that every aspect of their being is controlled, fixed and linear so that they can know how to live, what to do, who to date, and every aspect of their life. The truth is, 
finding out your personality type doesn't necessarily change any of that. You still have to make new choices every single day. And it's still, and that's point number five or six, I lost track because I can't count, that personality is a choice. Sometimes we hope that, you know, through genetic research, we'll be able to screen out unwanted personality traits and we'll be able to, you know, get rid of unwanted personality types in society so that we can only have and promote healthy ways of being and get rid of unhealthy personality traits. But the truth is, in the end, even though you inherit much of your personality from your family members and from your genetics, Ultimately, it's up to you what you choose to do with and how you choose to express your own personality. While perhaps nature gives you a push in a certain direction, it's up to you to do and to decide what you want that to mean for you and how you want to organize your life. And ultimately, that's point number six, probably, that personality and the idea of personality is constantly evolving. Our society is different today than what it was a hundred or a thousand years ago. And that means there are many new ways to express yourself. New hobbies, new games, new activities, new rules, new systems, new societies that didn't exist then. And that means new ways to express yourself too. Life is a color board and there are so many different ways you could move and change and evolve. And uh, these new innovations, this new technology also means that we have to keep evolving too. And so perhaps in the future we'll have new archetypes and new ways of living and new ways of thinking that didn't exist in the past. And that's point number seven. You have multiple personality types within you. What I mean with this is that your personality can be understood differently depending on if we study you from different situations or contexts. I could look at and study you based on who you are in a flow state at your very best, but I could also observe your habits and actions and decisions when you are under stress. And because of this, I could see two different personalities living under your head, under your skin. So in that sense, how you see yourself will depend on what situation, what mood you're in. It will depend on, for example, who you're with. And that's point number eight, that we have multiple personas that we switch between constantly, depending on where we are. I tend to think that we're the most ourselves when we're by ourselves, when we're playing games and doing fun things for ourselves by ourselves. But we also engage with many social settings, groups, companies, and work-life cultures. And these things put new demands on us. And so people may have to find themselves developing traits that they didn't have or wouldn't have developed if it wasn't for their environment and their upbringing. And so that brings us to point number nine. Personality is always connected to your personal life experiences, your upbringing, traumatic events and things like that. You can't expect that every single person who has the same personality type as you will have had the same experiences or will think the way you do. And so you'll find that everyone has a different way of relating to their type. Some people have happy childhoods and some have more difficult childhoods. And then again, some people grow to get certain jobs and certain roles. Some become moms, some dads, some don't have kids at all. And so because of that too, we also don't always get to experience different aspects of life. There are certain things in life that we will never get to experience or see or be or embody. And perhaps that's point number nine. Even if we have our different roles and our different vantage points on life, we're all human beings, ultimately. People tend to think that there are certain types that they're supposed to date, certain people they're supposed to be friends with, certain people that they work better with, but that actually depends on your level of understanding and consciousness. When your consciousness is not very well developed, you tend to reject many aspects of yourself and other people. There are many things that you say are unwanted, bad, or not right. And uh, these things often stem from our struggles, our traumas, and our negative experiences in life, or simply ignorance. Not having talked to, not having spoken to, not having gotten to know that person yet. And so actually, instead of trying to find that specific somebody or a specific personality type that you think you fit best with, perhaps it's better to sit down and talk and listen to everyone and to learn how and why you can benefit from their company and why 
they can teach you something because every single person can teach you something. Ultimately, we're all human beings and because of that we share a common root, a common ancestry and ultimately if you trace it all down and follow it all down in your own head you can connect with that ancestry, you can connect with that aspect of humanity in yourself. You have every single personality trait within you and you can learn to understand and relate to all types and traits. And that's point number 10. We're not supposed to have a personality type. We're supposed to be people, right? We're supposed to be in flow. We're supposed to find and live with energy, confidence and with passion. We're supposed to connect to society, to what's around us. We're supposed to connect to and listen to our own thoughts and experiences to reflect on our life and who we are. And we're supposed to continuously grow and grow and grow and evolve and experience all that life has to offer. I understand not everyone might agree with me on all these points, but I hope that everyone can see the value of thinking in the way I do and how it might benefit you. At least that's my point of view. How do you see it? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching.